When the military tackles a job, they don't mess around. Let's go get it done. Their tools are big, powerful. So that's why you need the big dog. And way high tech. Collection DAU comes to the CADU. We're learning all about it and having some fun with the Florida National Guard. At Cecil Field, we're checking out all kinds of choppers. Now that's one bad mamma jamma right there, baby. We got tools to tighten the rotors, take out vibration. You feeling me? And carry almost 10 tons of water to dump on fires. Then a construction unit fixes a runway fast and bends metal to let you complete a shelter in just one day. Boom! You got a building. Plus, I go to Kuwait to check out a high-tech combat Humvee. That's the magic stuff right there. Woo! And a shooting range that's much more than just a video game. From Florida to the deserts of the Middle East, these are the vehicles, equipment, and tools our troops use to get the job done. I'm telling you, baby, we got some cool tools. Hey, I'm Chris Grundy with a special edition of Cool Tools. Today we're hanging out with the men and women of the Florida National Guard. You know what that means, Cool Tools military style. At the Army Aviation Support Facility at Cecil Field, they work and train on all kinds of helicopters. They include Chinooks, Blackhawks, and Lakotas, all named for Native American tribes, in case you were wondering. Over at Camp Landing outside Jacksonville, Florida, an Air National Guard construction unit is showing us the ropes, too. The 202nd Red Horse Squadron prepares for all kinds of problems in the field. For instance, what happens when you got to land an airplane, but your runway's been bombed? You fix it, and quick! In order for the airplanes to take off and land, they have to have us there to build the runways, repair them, take care of the infrastructure around the base. When you're in a battle, you're going to take some hits. The runway repair team trains to take a bombed out runway and make it operational fast. This whole concrete area that's here is a mock concrete runway. The hole you see here is a prefabricated hole, but it does simulate and it's close to a, an actual bomb crater. So a bomb's come in, made a hole 30 feet wide, 10 feet deep. Now it's time to bring in the big equipment. All right, fellas, what we're we gonna do to get this filled up here as quickly as we can. A quick game plan, and it's game time. Two guys on me. All right, let's go get it done. The first step in the process is pushing in the rubble that blew out of the hole. Every movement is coordinated and directed by the crater chief. When you got an emergency situation, you got to work fast. These guys know what they're doing. Then more rock is loaded and brought in by the dump trucks. Right here, we got a 10-yard dump truck, and this front loader's got a two-yard bucket. We're going to fill this up, get all the rock in there, take it to the crater, and rah, fill it up. The excavator and track loader spread the filler evenly and compact it with their weight. The best piece of equipment we have on hand for this is this right here. And as you see, five minutes, you pretty much got it. It's just like preparing a foundation for any, any building. you got to have good feet underneath. Once the hole is filled and compacted, it's time for the grader. Now we're going to grade the, the crater where it's level with the existing runway. This is the, the final stage of filling the crater. Just making it smooth. Finally, the flat surface is covered with a 50-foot sheet of fiberglass. We assemble the mat team, drag the mat over it, and anchor it to the runway. And you can start landing planes on it. Check this. The runway repair team can finish this whole process in less than two hours. In the real world situation, there will be no second guessing. Every team member knows what to do, and that's what we need to happen to get it done expediently and get the airfield back up in operation. Well, as you can see, what was once a crater, now covered in fiberglass, we're bringing in aircraft, huh? Woo!